Hi folks, today we are going to make a case and add a camera to the Raspberry Pi that controls the Little Spot Mini. So I decided that just leaving the Raspberry Pi hanging from wires on the side of the workbench next to the Little Spot did not look good. And since I have a 3D printer and my intent was to go ahead and put a case on it, I thought, why don't I go ahead and do that? It turned out to take a little bit longer and be more work than I thought. I actually went through one design, two designs, and then three attempts at the third design before I found one I liked. The first problem is that this is a Raspberry Pi 3. And despite what everybody says about them being identical in terms of form factor, they are slightly different. And what that means is that they don't fit quite right. I made this case, which I thought was pretty slick, although didn't really have a way to mount onto the little spot, but, and it slid in, but there was this little tiny spot where the audio cable part comes out that you could force in if you slammed it, but didn't fit really well, and I really didn't want to slam my Raspberry Pi into the case. Then I tried this one, and it fits almost. Like it kind of fits, but when you start putting the top on, it doesn't quite make the cut. So I passed on that. This one was my first attempt to print using a raft. And I use rafts a lot on the MakerBot with ABA, uh, sorry, with PLA. And it works out really well. So I figured, all right, that'll work really fine. It did not work at all. The raft is completely not removable. Now to be fair, I am using an off-brand, super cheap PLA for this. So um, sometimes you may get what you pay for. So I didn't print, so I gave up on the raft idea. Then I finally printed it out without the raft and it actually fit and worked pretty well. And then I held it up next to here and I realized that I didn't really like how it looked. The green is a really nice accent, it's the low spot green, and the black is really cool, and the, the gold just didn't work. So I decided to go from PLA to my first ABS print. And this is kind of cool. This is, this is one of the big reasons that I've got the low spot, is to start playing with different filaments. And this is my very first attempt using some filament other than PLA. This is using ABS. and. Everything they tell you about the stank related to ABS is true. This thing puts out toxic fumes like nobody's business. It is not a pleasant smell. It is particularly not a pleasant smell when it's 97 or 98 degrees in the middle of July, Florida, and you walk into the garage. And even with the mini split going at full bore to try to keep this place cool, not so great. Fortunately, I don't. I didn't work out here while I was printing these things, so I let the thing print, and I came out and you know checked on it, and that was all well and good. But when the when the printing process was over, I opened up the garage door and let the place air out for a few minutes, and got the air out, let all the hot air in, and boom, we had two very nice ABS pieces. Now these ABS pieces did not deform; they're really nice and flat. I did a test cube before I printed this that did have a little bit of wobble. So I'm gonna start learning about ABS and I'm learning about different print types and different, different filaments. I had a print with different bed heats and I had a print with different temperatures and I had to set that into Cura. And it was pretty easy because I downloaded some pre-existing profiles from Lulzbot that were, this is the right profile for ABS and this is the right profile for PLA. So it helped kind of quite a bit. You just load the profile and go, but even so. So one of the, the, the other issues is that to assemble this thing, which assembles this way, to assemble this thing, uh, you need to put a couple screws in here. And the itsy bitsy teeny weeny screw holes were too small for any screws I happen to have sitting around the shop. And rather than going through the process of reprinting yet another case and trying to design the hole to fit the screw, I'm going to take this over to the drill press and drill it out and we'll see whether or not we can do traditional fasteners in regular plastic. And the kicker to that is I do not have a tap and die set so I'm going to attempt to take a plain ordinary metal screw and have it sort of self tap its way into here and hopefully I won't break it in the process. 
So let's adjourn to the drill press and do that part of the process. Okay, so here we are at the press. First thing I did was to make sure that the table is level and then I blue taped the heck out of the box to make sure that all the joints were as close as they were gonna be. So here goes, David and Power Tools, cross your fingers. Now, I don't have it all the way drilled through. What I'm doing is I just wanna make sure that I'm still aligned and I am. I wasn't actually smart enough to preset the depth on this thing, so uh, I'm kind of hoping I went far enough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to put the first screw in, and if that works, then I'll come back and I'll drill the rest of the screws. Okay, so let's try our first screw and see if it works. Back at the bench, uh, before I get started, you might notice these little gray things. This kind of bench has spots for bench dogs, which are these um, pieces that go in like this or like this to hold um, something that's being clamped in place. And they're really cool. I just ran around to check to see the camera. They're really cool, but I don't want to have screws and parts dig down through here. So what I've done is uh, 3D printed a whole series of bench dog tops to go and make this work. but anticipation. I want to see if this thing works. So let's see. Let's just tap out the screw just a tiny bit with a screwdriver. Let's grab a screw. Let's see if we can get it to start. If I can get it to start, I can probably get it to go in. Looks like it's starting. Right, doesn't look like the plastic's breaking. Don't want the plastic to, uh, to split. going in. Let's see how far it goes. Whoops. There we go. Except we do have some plastic split. I don't know if you can see that. Trying to change the focus to right here. You see there's a little bit of splitting right there. Which may mean I didn't go down far enough with the drill. So I am going to this time set a drill stop to be actually smart about it, drill the other holes and see whether or not this thing withstands what we're doing. I'll be back in a few minutes. Here's the finished piece. As you can see, it's got a number of mounting holes on it, which the Thingiverse designer said was designed specifically for mounting to the Lulzbot Mini. As it turns out, that became a bit of a challenge. I first had to wiggle a screw in behind a solid plastic frame. Once I managed to do that, uh, it was a really tight clearance to be able to actually uh, tighten the screw from underneath the case. And then as the ultimate sort of gotcha here, there's not enough space to actually get the USB charging connector into uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, when it's mounted that close to the deck of the Lulzbot Mini. So that was a fail. As it turns out, there's another set of open holes higher up on the Lulzbot Mini, so I did manage to get it uh, put in there, although, as you can see, it was a pretty tight fit. But once I put it together, um, and once I got the screws in, I was able to screw it in, and it fits reasonably nicely to the side of the Lulzbot Mini. After all that, it turns out I just didn't like it there. I didn't like all the wires coming out of the front of the unit and kind of getting in the way and messing it up. I just, I didn't really like it. And because the plug connections are in the front, it just didn't work out. So what I eventually did is I decided I would just simply move the whole thing and stick it on top of the, the wire cluster that was where my switch was between the various printers. And I thought that that was probably the best way to go. And so that's where this uh, device now lives. I also added a camera and it turns out that the OctoPrint OctoPi combination supports a relatively decent range of webcams that you can just plug on in. 
I had an old IPVO document camera, and what makes this thing special is that it allows you to sort of adjust it to wherever you want to put it and point it where you want it to go. So what I did is I pulled this thing out of my closet and I plugged it in and it turns out it didn't work. But there was an easy fix. The IPVO folks told me that I needed to change uh, the frame rate and they actually told me to go ahead and edit in a, a root folder. But as it turns out, the author Gina told me I needed to look in a different configuration file. So here I am, I'm logged into SSH on my OctoPi, and I'm going to connect to, I'm going to change my directory to boot, uh, let's see, just go to slash boot, hello, let's try that again, cd slash boot, and what we're looking for is this octopi.txt, so I'm going to vi octopi.txt and come down and we're looking for this frame rate here. As you can see, it defaults. This was commented out with um, the typical uh, hashtag for commenting something out. Whoops, there we go. Uh, and I just <laughs> There we go, let's come over here. I just changed minus F from 10 to 30. And I'm not going to save it because I did. But uh, then I rebooted and it worked. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Once it all works, you can start viewing the printer as it's operating. As you can see uh, in this uh, little piece of video capture, you can also do it from the video or camera pane on the uh, the smartphone app, which is great. So uh, between the two of them, on Touch UI, which is technically not a smartphone app, it's technically uh, just a web page you go to that, that's handheld friendly. But anyway, the point is you can watch this in both places. Uh, you can also do a time lapse. So if you click the time lapse tag up there, you can then do a time lapse. And I did one, and I'm going to end this with the time lapse. Unfortunately, the camera placement wasn't the best in the world because I still haven't quite figured that out yet. I'd probably want to put the camera in the front as opposed to from the side, but still, um, the time lapse worked out really well. And uh, that's just a side effect feature of Octoprint once you have a camera hooked up, which is very cool. And there you go. We've added a case and a camera to our Octoprint Raspberry Pi, attaching it to the Lulzbot Mini. And this makes this into a pretty capable little device. Uh, I'm going to include uh, links to all of this stuff below this video and in the ZDNet article this goes with. Uh, so you'll be able to find all of that. And as you can see, we're finishing up making not the typical Lulzbot Roctopus, which is a very cool thing, but this is a Spocktopus. And uh, there you go. We're all set. Uh, go ahead and click the subscribe link if you haven't already, and I'll see you with the next part of our project. My name is David Gewertz for ZDNet and DIYIT. Thank you very much, and go build something cool.